Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where we'll be using these results to solve coding problems. In the last tutorial we learned that if you have a set of data values say x from x of 1 to n where x bar is equal to the mean then if we can transform this data using a coding such as y is equal to ax plus b where a and b are constant values then the mean of our coded data is equal to ax bar plus b where a and b are the values taken from the coding equation and x bar is the mean of the original data set and the standard deviation of the coded data is equal to our constant a multiplied by sigma x which is the standard deviation of the original data. Now I'll keep this result here for your reference but instead of trying to memorize this, I would suggest it would be easier and more useful to remember that the mean of coded data is affected by any of the main operators that we can find inside the coding equation. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Whereas the standard deviation of coded data is only affected by two operators that you can find inside the coding equation. That's multiplication, or division. So let's have a look at this first question. A set of data values x is shown below. The first part asks us to code the data using the coding y is equal to x minus 3 over 4. So in order to code the data we simply need to substitute these values of x into this coding equation to get different values of y which will form our new coded data. So starting with 51 and subbing this into this equation we get 51 minus 3 divided by 4 is equal to 12. Subbing 75 into this equation, we get 75 minus 3 over 4, which using the calculator, you would get 18. Subbing 31 into this equation, we would get 7. And subbing the rest of the values into this equation would give us the remaining coded values of y. The next part of the question asks us to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the coded data values. Now there are two ways we can approach this question. One method is to work out the mean and the standard deviation for the original data and then use the results that we learned to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for the coded data. Another way is simply just to work out the mean and the standard deviation from this coded data set which we've just calculated and that's the method we're going to use. We can calculate the mean of this data set by adding all the values and dividing by the number of values that are in the data set to get that the mean of the coded data y bar is equal to 10.25. Now in order to calculate the standard deviation of this data set let's use the formula that will be given to you in the exam sigma is equal to the square root of the sum of x squared values over n minus the mean squared. So using this formula, let's first of all work out the y squared terms, which we'll use in place of x squared, which we get by simply squaring each term. So the set of y squared values would be as follows. By squaring all these terms, we would get 144, the square root of 12, 324, the square root of 18, 49, the square of 7, and so on. And therefore, the sum of these y squared terms is equal to 1065.5. Now, counting the number of data points, we have 8 values, and therefore, n in this case would be equal to 8. And so, given that we have the sum of y squared terms, the sample size, and the mean, we can use these values in Formula 1 to find that the standard deviation sigma y is equal to the square root of 1065.5 divided by 8 minus 10.25 squared which is the mean squared and working this out in our calculator we get the standard deviation of y is equal to 5.30 rounded to three significant figures. The next part of the question says use your answer to calculate the mean of the original data. So using the answer that we found for the mean of the coded data, we need to find some way of calculating the mean of the original data. Now, since we were given that the coding equation was y is equal to x minus 3 over 4, well, we know that the mean of the coded data is affected by all the operators found inside the coding equation. And so the mean of the coded data is equal to 
the mean of the original data, x bar minus three over four. And since we have y bar, which we found to be 10.25, we can work out the mean of the original data, x bar, by simply subbing this into this equation and solving for x bar. So subbing 10.25 into this equation, we get that 10.25 is equal to x bar minus three over four. Multiplying both sides of the equation by four, we get that 41 is equal to x bar minus three. And adding three to both sides of the equation, we get that x bar, the mean of our original data, is equal to 44. So you need to be comfortable with using coding equations in order to find the mean or the standard deviation of either the coded data, or in this case, the original data. And as we saw in this example, at times you'll need to rearrange the equation in order to find the required value. Let's have a look at the next problem. Using the coding y is equal to x over 10, Given that x bar is equal to 48 and sigma x is equal to 3.7, the first part asks us to find the mean of the coded data. So in order to find the mean of the coded data, let's use this coding equation that we've been given, that y is equal to x over 10. And using this equation, we can therefore infer that y bar the mean of the coded data is equal to x bar, the mean of the original data, over 10. And since we've been given x bar to be equal to 48, we can simply substitute this into this equation to find y bar, the mean of the coded data. So therefore, y bar is equal to 48 divided by 10, which is equal to 4.8. The next part of the question asks us to find the standard deviation of the coded data. Now, given this coding equation, it follows that the standard deviation of y, the coded data, is equal to sigma x, the standard deviation of the original data, divided by 10. So subbing this value of sigma x is equal to 3.7 into this equation, we get that the standard deviation of the coded data, sigma y, is equal to 3.7 divided by 10, which is equal to 0.37. Okay, next question. The coded mean price of televisions in a shop was calculated using the coding y is equal to x minus 72 over 150. The mean price was 2.5. Find the true mean price of the televisions. So I'll give you a few minutes to pause the video so you can have a crack at this question and when you come back I will show you the work solutions. Welcome back. So in this question, we've been given a coding equation and we've also been given the mean price for the coded set of data to be equal to 2.5. And we need to use this information to find the true mean price of the televisions. Very similar to the first question, but instead of being asked to find the mean of the original data, we've been asked to find the true mean. So do watch out for the wording in these questions. So using the coding equation y is equal to x minus 72 over 150, this means that y bar, the mean of the coded data, is equal to x bar minus 72 over 150. Now since we've been given the mean of the coded data, y bar, to be equal to 2.5, we simply need to substitute this into this equation and solve for x bar to find the true mean. So subbing 2.5 into this equation, we get that 2.5 is equal to x bar minus 72 over 150. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 150, we get that 375 is equal to x bar minus 72. And if we add 72 to both sides of the equation, we get that x bar, the true mean price of the televisions, is equal to 447 okay let's have a look at the next question the lifetime x in hours of 70 light bulbs is shown in the table the data is coded using y is equal to x minus 1 over 20. 
Now, the first part of this question asks us to estimate the mean of the coded values y bar. So the first thing to observe is that we've been given a continuous data set, which has been illustrated in the form of a grouped frequency table. So in order to estimate the mean of the coded values, we still need to use our coding equation. However, in this case, we need to be careful about the values of x that we input into this coding equation to get corresponding values of y. Since this is a continuous set of data, what we need to do is substitute the midpoints of each class interval. Okay, so let's first of all find the midpoints of each class interval. And this is what we would get. So it's 21, 23, 25, 27, and 29. So in order to find the coded values of y, we simply need to substitute these midpoints into this coding equation. And so substituting 21 into this coding equation, we get 21 minus one, which is 20 divided by 20, gives us one. Subbing this value, we get 23 minus one over 20, which gives us 1.1. And substituting the rest of these midpoints into this equation, we get the following coded values of y. Now to find the mean of these coded values, let's use this formula for the mean of data given in a frequency table, which is equal to the sum of the product of the frequencies and their data values divided by the total frequency. So subbing the highlighted values in the table into this formula, in the numerator we get three times one plus 12 times 1.1, plus 40 times 1.2, plus 10 times 1.3, plus five times 1.4, all over 70, which is the total frequency. Now working this out in the calculator, we get that the mean of the coded values Y bar is equal to 1.20 hours rounded to three significant figures. Okay, and don't forget your units of measurement in these calculations. The next part of the question says, hence, find an estimate for the mean lifetime of the bulbs. Now seeing as the question says hence, it implies that we can use the previous answer to work out the mean lifetime of the bulbs. The lifetime of the bulbs was the original data that we were given. So we need to find the mean of the original data. So using our coding equation, y is equal to x minus one, over 20, it follows that the mean of the coded data, y bar, is equal to x bar minus one over 20. Since we've just worked out y bar to be equal to 1.20, rounded to three significant figures, we can sub this into this equation to get that 1.20 and so on is equal to x bar minus one over 20. Notice that we've used a complete value and not the rounded value in this equation. So we now need to solve for x bar. So multiplying both sides by 20, we get the 24.05 and so on is equal to x bar minus one. And adding one to both sides, we get that the mean lifetime of the bulbs is equal to 25.1 rounded to three significant figures. The last question asks us to use the coding to estimate the standard deviation of the lifetimes of the bulbs. So in this question, we've been asked to find the standard deviation of the original data. Now we've been specifically asked to use the coding to estimate the standard deviation. So what we need to do is work out the standard deviation of the coded data and then use the coding equation to work out the standard deviation of the original data. So let's use this formula to work out the standard deviation of Y from this grouped frequency table. Assuming you're familiar using this formula, you could start by calculating the y squared terms by squaring each of these midpoints to get the following row. And so by using this updated table to calculate each component of this formula, we would get that the standard deviation of the coded data is equal to the square root of 101.82 divided by 70 minus 84.2 over 70 all squared. And I've assumed that you're comfortable calculating the components of this formula. Otherwise do check out our video on standard deviation from frequency tables in the link below. Working this out in the calculator, we get 0 0.08 and so on. 
And so now we found the standard deviation of the coded data. Let's use our coding equation, y is equal to x minus 1 over 20, to work out the standard deviation of the original data. Okay, so using this equation, this means that therefore the standard deviation of the coded data is equal to the standard deviation of the original data sigma x over 20. Remembering that the standard deviation wouldn't be affected by this minus 1. Now that we have sigma y, we can substitute it into this equation to get 0 0.08 and so on is equal to sigma x over 20. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 20 we get that sigma x is equal to 20 times by 0.08 and so on, giving us that the standard deviation of the lifetime of bulbs is equal to 1.76 hours, rounded to three significant figures. Okay, let's have a look at the last example. So a teacher standardizes the test marks of his class by adding 12 to each one and then reducing the mark by 20%. If the standardized marks are represented by T and the original marks by M, the first part asks us to write down a formula for the coding the teacher has used. So I recommend you to pause the video to have a go at this first part, and when you come back, I'll show you the work solution. Welcome back. So in this first part, we've been asked to write down a formula for the coding that the teacher has used. In other words, we've been asked to find the formula that relates the variables T, which represents the standardized mark with the variable M, which represents the original marks. Now we've been told that the standardized mark T is found by adding 12 to each original mark M and then reducing that mark or sum by 20%. Now adding 12 to each of the original marks can be represented by the formula T is equal to M plus 12. However, we're also told that that mark is then reduced by 20%. So how can we incorporate this into our formula? Well, a reduction of 20% is equivalent to a multiplier of 0.8. So timesing this sum by 0 0.8 would give us a formula for the coding that the teacher has used, which we can expand the right hand side to get the T is equal to 0 0.8 M plus 9.6 and label this formula one. Next, we're told that the following summary statistics are calculated for the standardized marks. N is equal to 28, T bar is equal to 52.8, and STT is equal to 7.3. And we've been asked to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the original marks gained. So again, I'm going to leave you with a few moments to pause the video to have a go at this question. And when you come back, I'll show you the work solutions. Welcome back. So in order to calculate the mean of the original marks gained, let's use the coding equation that we've just found to determine that the mean of the standardized marks T bar is equal to 0 0.8 M bar plus 9.6. And as we've seen previously, the mean of the coded data is affected by the multiplication and addition used in the coding equation. Now, since we've been given T bar, we can substitute this into equation two to get that 52.8 is equal to 0 0.8 M bar plus 9.6. And to find the mean of the original marks gained, we simply need to solve for M bar. So subtracting 9.6 from both sides, we get 43.2 is equal to 0 0.8 M bar. And dividing both sides of the equation by 0 0.8, we get the M bar, the mean of the original marks gained is equal to 54. Next, we need to calculate the standard deviation of the original marks gained. So from the coding equation labeled one, we can say that the standard deviation of T is equal to 0 0.8 times by the standard deviation of M. Again, note that we've used multiplication 
that's been used in this coding equation, but not the addition. Now, since we've been given the summary statistics STT and N, we should be able to use this formula, which you'll find in your formula book, to work out the standard deviation of T. So summing STT is equal to 7.3 and N is equal to 28 into formula three, we get that the standard deviation sigma of T is equal to the square root of 7.3 over 28. Working this out in the calculator, we get 0 0.51 and so on. So now we have sigma T, we can sub it back into this equation to work out sigma m to get that 0 0.51 and so on is equal to 0 0.8 times by sigma m dividing both sides of the equation by 0 0.8 we get that sigma m the standard deviation of the original marks gained is equal to 0 0.638 rounded to three significant figures so in this tutorial we've looked at various examples for calculating the mean and standard deviation for coded data for discrete and continuous data sets Hope this was useful for you. Keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.